just sit with her. Oh. Thanks so much. Thank you. Fine, all right. Do you remember? Do you remember? She was a baby, right? Oh, oh, oh was it really? With that gathering she with her. Wow. She's out. Good morning, I'm Kelly Hudnall, co-lead pastor here at Radiant Church, and we are so thankful that you're joining us today. of the hunger that is here. When I came around the back and just seeing everybody line up, there is a hunger here. And I just want to kick open tonight with saying this, God rewards hunger. There is something here tonight I felt, we don't want another meeting. We're done with meetings. We're done with services. Please don't come in here tonight, go on another service. We're gonna enjoy another service. This is not gonna be another service. I don't want that. I don't think even Holy Spirit wants that. I think we're here tonight because there's a hunger of knowing that God is, He's shaking things up and there's something new that He wants to birth. You know know why we did this? Not because, oh, that'd be cool, Nate and Christy and Papa Lou and Therese could do another great meeting. It was because we knew that God was wanting to birth something new and that we needed to just be faithful and obedient to do that. So tonight, let me just pray. Holy Spirit, bust this wide open. Rent the heavens, God! Rent the heavens, God! Rent the heavens, God! Show up in power and might! Meet us tonight, God! Meet us tonight! Let me just open with this. You know, it's March 29th. In John 3.29, 
if I can find it. <laughs> the bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. All week I've just been, I've just been weeping about tonight, feeling just there's a longing in us for him. There's a longing, you know, sometimes you kind of go through stuff for such a long period of time in your Christian walk and especially the remnant, right? Especially if you go, you're a pioneer, you go through some seasons, right? And sometimes you just feel like it's not of your own doing always. You just feel like you lose that. You lose that longing. But there's been something new that's been stirring. And I'll just be sitting on the couch in the morning just weeping, saying, God, we want to meet you. We want to create space for you to come. Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. Who will prepare a place for me to dwell? God, we're saying tonight, here is that place. Here is that place. Our family's that place. As we go out of here tonight, God, dwell with us. This is my daughter, Sophie. She want to come up here with me tonight. God, dwell with us. Have your way in us. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what God's going to do tonight. We don't really have much of a agenda except we know we're going to take communion. We know we're going to war with the blood. So I'll say this. Whatever you've come here tonight, whatever place you're at, just do one thing for me and say, God, whatever you want to do tonight, do it in me. Do it through me. That might mean you need to fight and worship and break through some of the stuff that's coming at you. I challenge you to do that. Step into a place. I pray that tonight God remind you of who you are. Holy Spirit, we give you the stage. Do what you want to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Can we just stand together? affection right now in this room we lift our eyes to you you're the one who's worthy sing here's my life here's my life as a sacrifice I'll be the
I was a pastor, a youth pastor at a Methodist church. And I remember going into that church late at night. And I remember kneeling down at the altar, all alone in the dark. And that old song I prayed, teach me to love thee as thine angels love. One holy passion filling all my frame, the baptism of the heaven descended dove, my heart an altar, and thy love a flame. And when I just felt to kneel down, suddenly the Lord brought it back to me, that it's a new day and a restoration of the altar of God. One holy passion, one holy, I want to invite people who want to come and build an altar right here as we sing this song, take my life. Lord, I build an altar. We begin, do away with the preliminaries tonight. Offer your life. Come and let's bow and say, God, send fire on this altar. Come and let's sing it again.
up on the stage. I'm like, that's how we need to be. I'm like, hey, maybe she shouldn't run on there. And I'm like, nah, just leave her, let her go. You know, we've been too used to all the little cookie cutter things that maybe tonight we need to break out a little bit. So maybe we just need to go back into that a little bit. And we need to really break free tonight because the Spirit of the Lord is here. And with the Spirit of the Lord, Freedom! Holy Spirit, break out! Break us out! Break us out! In Jesus' mighty name, let's go back into that. I'm setting the captives 
victory, says the Lord tonight. For you have been contained, says the Lord. And I'm setting you free tonight from the spirit of religion and everything that would try to muzzle you. Even right now, you can feel a bubbling forth in your spirit. There's a new song and there's a new sound. The Lord says, it is time for it to come forth. It's time for it to come forth because as it comes forth, it's not only going to set you free, it's going to set everyone around you free. To begin to speak in tongues with me right now. Just begin to really lift up your heavenly language for a moment. Just begin to worship Him. Let it come forth. Let it come forth. Let it come forth. Hey! Doesn't matter what it sounds like. Let it go. It's been stuck in there for too long. Someone right now, I feel like there's even deliverance beginning to break forth over here somewhere. People are beginning to feel a shaking and a trembling. God is going to really shake you free of some stuff tonight. Just get ready. We haven't even started. Holy Spirit's beginning to move. I think some of you need to get like David and get a little undignified. What if that breakthrough you've been longing for Sounds silly, but what if that breakthrough you're longing for is going to come through just getting loose a little bit? Deciding it doesn't matter what I look like anymore because, man, I'm desperate for the King. I'm desperate for the King. I'm desperate for the King. I want Him. God, I want the finished work of the cross to be evident in my life. I'm done looking pretty in my row and my pew now. I'm done with those days. Those days are over. Those days are over for you, okay? That's not the kind of people. The Bible says we're a peculiar people. What does that look like? I don't know, maybe it looks like I I can't dance. I'm not even gonna try. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I should practice what I preach. But tonight the Lord wants to confront some things to set you free. Can I prophesy a little? Man, that was convicting when I saw Ava running up on here. That's my daughter, by the way. (laughs) Third one is the most wild one we have. (laughs) Yes, she's a wild one. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I thought I was wild. No, I'm not wild. I feel tame compared to her. (laughs) Let me prophesy a little. I've been trembling as I've been writing this. I heard the Lord say, the eagles have been looking for a place to gather and they've found none. That's all He said to me for weeks about this. I heard the Lord say, the eagles have been looking for a place to gather and they have found none until now. I felt the grief at His heart, but also felt the joy because there are people rising up. Not just us, it's all of you here. I feel like tonight, get ready. God just might tell you to do something. He might just tell you to gather people in your living room and do the same thing. The eagles have been looking for a place to gather and they've found none. Alone in their nests, hidden in crooks and caves that felt restless and looking for their people. A company who aren't about building the next empire or setting the next exclusive table 
of elite celebrity Christians, but a people with no agenda but Jesus. But there'd be nomads and vagabonds looking at their wings molting and feeling like their greatest days were behind them. But the Lord says tonight, Eagles, it's now time to gather. It's now time to spread your wings again. For your Lone Ranger days are done, says the Lord. Your days of longing for the new wine and not seeing it are over. For you carry the new wine. In exchange for your hunger and desperation, I'm giving you what you have been longing for. I'm now gathering my eagles in their nests across the globe and they will experience my glutter glory, says the Lord. For I've marked you as my new breed, a set apart people created for this Kairos moment to lead the charge at the turning of the tide. Many have said, what is the point? Our nation and the nations have decided their fate. And the Lord would say, Josiah generation, rise up. Esther generation, rise up. Daniel 2, 21 to 22. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with Him. We're at a change of the God moment. You are the kings He is raising up for this hour. You are the remnant who God has reserved who have not bowed their knee to Baal. Now here you are at the turning of the tide because I've anointed you to lead the church into the new. We are done with old manna. We are done with compromise and mixture and culture telling us what we can and can't do and can and cannot say. We are the voice of the one crying out of the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. We won't bow and we won't relent and we won't hide in caves anymore. And here you are, here you are. I know many of you, I I felt it praying for you for weeks. There was a temptation to pull back and just, you've not stepped into church buildings in long time, some of you, or you've just been on the fringe, but you've come. Thank you for coming. We are the burning ones. You thought your flame had burned out after years of going through the valley and battle after battle and dark night after dark night. But you've only grown in the dark. You have only increased. The anointing only increases in the dark. In the dirt you died. And now the Lord says, in this moment, I'm now going to anoint you afresh for this hour of mighty exploits. I'm mantling you with a double portion of my spirit to rise up as my pure mouthpieces, to confront compromise and mixture in the current house and to build the new. You will dethrone kings and evict principalities. You will tear down ideologies and lies, cast like a veil of blindness over this nation and you will see righteousness be exalted over this nation again. Righteousness, we declare over the United States of America tonight and the nations. So stop running, stop hiding. You are here because you can't do that old thing anymore. In fact, tonight you must lay any of that old thing down. It's time to be emptied, says the Lord, so I can fill you mantle you and robe you with it to the, for the days to come. My eagles, now is your time. For even now, I'm breaking the assignments of frustration and chaos that have been sent against you and your family. That's what keeps us. The enemy will use those assignments. Fires that have erupted over the years to keep you grounded in a season I've called you to fly, to soar, to hear what I'm saying. Today is a new day in the turning of the tide. Now the Lord says, get ready for the new epoch, a season of the diminishing of man's systems and empires and the era of the remnant. It is now upon you. We are in the hour of the convocation of eagles and the gathering of those who seek only my face and nothing added. But then I heard the Lord say, 
You've only been in the birth pangs up until now, but get ready because the birthing is coming. Get ready because the birthing is coming. It is the birthing of my pure and spotless bride that will emerge and set things right. We're not only coming together because it's Easter and it sounded like a great day. I feel like it's a moment that God marked on His calendar. I truly do. Do you realise you're in Colorado Springs? America's mountain, home of America's mountain, home of, one of the, home of the Air Force Academy, NORAD, which is North American Aerospace Defence Command. And it's also an Olympic training centre. God is taking back the heights. And the body of Christ, we're getting back at air supremacy. We've been living in the second heavens for too long. We have, we've been fighting things we don't need to fight. We need to come up higher. And in this hour, God is establishing eagle's nest that would rise above higher than the enemy's plans. And we would confound him at his own game. I felt the Lord tell me earlier, He said, pray for this. I feel like dreams and visions gonna wrap after tonight. You're gonna begin to get strategies for your own personal situations you're going through. See, many of you come tonight saying, God, I'm at my wit's end. I don't know what to do now. I've come here, to, you've come here tonight desperate. The Lord is gonna give you the strategy, the key to unlock the very thing that you thought was impossible. Why? Because tonight you're in a room of people in Colorado Springs, a, a room of eagles, and you're gonna begin to flap those wings and come up higher than what you've been living in. You're coming up above the storm and it's time, says the Lord. We're getting back at air supremacy. So I believe tonight is a marking, it's a shifting moment for the body of Christ. Let me just share something before I hand this mic over. I, I need to. Christy's got something to share. On the night that I announced we're gonna have this gathering, I'll read it from here because I, I don't know, I always say it better when I read it. I, I said to the Lord, like, do, do you really want me to do this? <sighs> like I said, I just didn't want another meeting. Like, there's nothing wrong with them, but I, I'm just built different, guys. I've always have been. Like, I was the teenage kid see, searching out for revival and I'd find some church, you know, tent revival and be just out for three days in the glory, wake up like straw in my hair. And, you know, I, I just, I'm just built different. I'm a, I pursue God. I just, I don't want... I don't know, I sometimes don't even fit in in conferences and some of this stuff. It's just not my thing, you know. I'm just being real with you guys. I'm not that guy. And I know many of you aren't those people because why? It's not to mock those things. It's because you're born for something different and you're born to set the tone of something new that God's pouring out. I said, God, I don't know. I don't want to do something, you know. Maybe just gathering around my table, but I can't fit 200 people around my table. And then I had a dream. In the dream, I'm in a building and the blood of Jesus is flowing down the altar, just flowing. And people are running desperate to get to the blood. They're desperate to get to the blood. And as they get to the blood, they start getting delivered. They start getting set free. They start getting healed. They start emerging, prophesying, speaking about the new thing that God's doing. Just women, men just popping up out of the mess. It was like it was a river. It was like they were getting drenched under the blood. I'm like, man, they look different than when they went down in there. But then they were grabbing the blood. And this is weird, but they were grabbing it and they were running out the door and I knew it was ascending. I knew it was an impartation of something tonight the Lord's releasing that you're going to take home with you. We, we, we don't want another meeting, Right? We need to see you grab what God pours out in this time tonight and you take it back where you go. Because it's not about me, not about Lou. You didn't come here to see us. You came here because you're hungry to grab something. You're hungry for something that you're longing for. I wanna tell you something tonight and Christy will share this better than me. The missing weapon of the church for a long time has been the blood. We've not understood it. I'm not gonna say any more than that. But tonight God wants to do something special. And here on Good Friday, we know that we need to centre tonight around the blood. We need to centre tonight around the blood of the Lamb. I have more to say, but I'm gonna leave it there tonight. I just feel like the Lord telling me I need to pass it over. I feel like it's a holy moment tonight. Don't miss what God wants to give to you, what He wants to impart to you. 
Even just right now, can you just put your hands out for a moment? Jesus, we just say yes to whatever you want to do. Jesus, this is not a man's thing. We don't want man, what man can give us anymore. We want what you give us. <sighs> Grief lift now in the name of Jesus. Hope deferred lift now in the name of Jesus. I heard you watchmen, says the Lord. I heard you intercessors, says the Lord. I've heard your cries and you've stood there for years praying. God, when will I shift? When will it shift and the grief is laid heavy upon your heart? So the Lord says, watch now, it will shift. For you will not only, you'll get to see the very thing that I told you that you would see. Do I bring you to the moment of birth? I might bring delivery, says the Lord. For you will birth. You will deliver. You will see with your own eyes the very thing they mocked you for. The very thing that I put in your spirit long ago, you will see. You'll see it. Grandmama Eagles in this building tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your legacy that you've been establishing silently that no one sees. Mama Eagles, thank you for nurturing when no one saw. Thank you for holding fast to the promise when they thought you were strange and you were weird. You tucked in your prayer closet and prayed anyway. Thank you. Holy Spirit's doing something here right now. And He said to me, as we were on our way here tonight, He said, I'm about to release a new revelation to my church of the blood of Jesus. And I believe tonight that revelation is pouring out upon you. You see, the the blood of the Lamb, communion, we have treated it like a ritual, when in reality, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. It's a weapon for every problem you're facing. It's a weapon for every issue in the United States of America. It's a weapon for our children and our children's children. It is a weapon. And I just want you to receive it right now. We're gonna have many moments like this over the next hour or two, but I want you to receive it. I want you to put your hands out and receive it. Holy Spirit, give us a revelation of the blood like we've never had a revelation of before. I feel like we've had a glimpse of it, God. Pull back the veil, rend the heavens, as Nate said. Rend the heavens, Holy Spirit, with a revelation of the blood of the Lamb. Over our families, God over our children, over the warfare of the, over the United States right now. Give us a revelation, a fresh revelation of the blood that Jesus poured out upon the cross. Give us that revelation, Holy Spirit. 
I just want you to say it right now. Holy Spirit, give me a fresh revelation of the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't want to move from this moment, but I do want to just spend a moment teaching. And so if you want to just return to your seats, just quietly stay in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I've been pretty quiet on social media because I've been writing a new book about Esther. (laughs) And I know it may not seem pivotal to communion and the blood of the Lamb, but as I've been sharing with Lou and Therese, Holy Spirit's had me in moments of utter weeping as I've been writing and studying the book of Esther. Because as I'm gonna show you tonight, I just wanna take you through a little storyline of Esther. But before I do, I wanna quickly share a story that happened last year. Last year in January, Nate and I had just moved to the United States. We just moved here and I opened up social media one day and you guys know I pray over abortion, right? I've, that's been my, one of my biggest things is God's called us here to pray to see the end of abortion and we've seen the fall of Roe. Thank you, Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. But we're now chasing out Goliath's brothers over the land. And last year in January, I opened up Instagram and I saw the Satanic Temple had announced that they were going to open a all trimester abortion clinic or temple in New Mexico. And I remember looking at that going, oh my gosh, this warfare, like the enemy's just rearing his head like never before, right? And I was angry, I was so angry. But then all of a sudden I saw what they were going to have women say once they had aborted their babies. They were going to have them say, after the abortion, after the blood had been poured out, by my body, by my blood, by my will it is done. And as soon as I saw that, this righteous anger arose within me. I said to Nate, it is a direct mockery of the blood of Jesus and Satan knows it. And so I said to Nate, someone needs to do something. (laughs) And the Holy Spirit says to me, you, yes, you, you're gonna do something. I'm like, okay. (laughs) So I start praying and I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do you want us to do? Do you just want us to pray over this? You know, release a gathering of prayer over this. And the Holy Spirit says to me, you're gonna go to New Mexico. And I'm like, okay, maybe we go to the direct, to the temple, we'll find out where the temple is and we're gonna take the blood of the lamb there. And the Holy Spirit says to me, no, you're going to take this battle to the heights. You're not going to go down and fight in the pits. You're going to take this battle to the heights. So over the next couple of days, we start seeing these prophetic things take place. The first thing that takes place is we're on this road trip. We're driving along North Dallas and a little bird runs across the road and it's a road runner. Has anyone seen a road runner? They're really weird looking birds. <laughs> I'm from Australia, right? So we haven't seen a bird like that before. And I'm like, I think that's a roadrunner. And again, the Holy Spirit says to me, look at what the state bird of New Mexico is. It's a roadrunner. And think about the roadrunner, right? You think about that movie or like the little TV series of roadrunner. There's actually a lyric in the series song. It says that crazy coyote, when will he ever learn? He can never mow the roadrunner down. And the Holy Spirit says to me, you're that road runner. You're gonna go, and that crazy coyote is not gonna run you down. <laughs> so that was confirmation number one. I'm telling you this story because I want you to get a revelation of what the blood of the lamb does. We, that was confirmation number one. And then confirmation number two, I have a dream. That following night, I have a dream where I'm literally standing alongside this river that was literally blood. It was a blood river. And it had a sign next to it that said Red River. Now, Nate and I are from Australia. You guys know. I know nothing of New Mexico, except for when I was little, I was growing up. I love this show called Salty, the Singing Songbook. And they went to Albuquerque. That's all I knew of New Mexico was Albuquerque. So 
I have this dream and I'm taking communion. Like I'm literally, I've got this cup and I'm drawing it out of the Red River and I begin to drink it. And I see this sign next to me as I'm drawing the water out of the Red River and it says Red River. So I wake up and I said to Nate, maybe there's a little place, I don't know, maybe there's a river that looks red or something like that in New Mexico. So we open up Google Maps and find Red River. There's a Red River as well as a city, a little tiny city, an alpine city called Red River where the Red River runs through it. So I'm like, we're going to Red River. <laughs> We've got to go to Red River. And I'm like, we're taking, we're taking the battle to the blood. We're literally taking the battle to the blood. Well, I announce this on social media and our friends reach out to us. They're like, We've been there before. I think that Red River City is located in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, which means Blood of Christ Mountains. I'm like, yes! <laughs> so excited. So we organise this meeting and we get there and I'm like, just so excited. I'm like, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. We get there and I'm, I'm saying like as many as you guys, probably more than everyone here packed out this tiny little community centre that literally backed on the back of the Red River. And by the way, down the street, there was a little town, a little RV resort called Roadrunner RV. <laughs> so we're just like, we love you, Holy Spirit. It's so much fun. But anyway, we get there and we all go out the back and take communion. And this is what was amazing. As we're walking out there, there are 12 deer all drinking from Red River, 12 of them. And Habakkuk 2.23, I think it is, talks about, you make my feet like hind's feet. You cause me to walk on the high places. And the, the blood of Jesus is a high place. It's literally taking the battle of the enemy up to the heights where he cannot breathe. So we're there, we take communion. I find out about two months ago, only two months ago, so this is like 10 months in process, right? And sometimes you've got to do these things, these prophetic acts, and you won't know what's going to happen until later. So we do this whole act of prophetic act, taking communion by the Red River, in Red River, in the blood of Christ mountains. And two months ago, I found out they were never able, the satanic temple, were never able to open an actual clinic. (laughs) They never opened. So... The thing is, they still have an online clinic, but they were never actually able to open a physical location. So we're still battling this, but this is what the blood of Jesus does. You take the battle to the heights and it completely chokes out the enemy. Amen. Listen, I, so I'm going to quickly share with you this dream I had last year, and I'm going to bring this in about Esther. And men, I know you might think in here, oh, Esther, here we go, another woman's story, no. Esther is actually a representation of the bride of Jesus in the last days. And Mordecai, as I'm going to show you, is a picture of Jesus himself. Last year I had a dream. This is not long after this whole Red River scenario. I had a dream where I saw Esther. She was sitting at the banquet table with the king alongside Haman. And sorry, Haman was opposite her in the dream. Their feasting table was filled only with bread and wine. Esther poured red wine into the gold gold chalice and handed it across the table. She gave it to Haman. Then she said to him, drink up. (laughs) His eyes appeared happy and full of excitement. This is my dream. His eyes appeared happy and full of excitement, feeling very honoured by the queen. He took the chalice from Esther's hands, lifting it to his mouth and tipping his head back. He began to drink the red wine. No sooner had the first drop entered his mouth did something begin to happen. His face contorted and his eyes began to bulge. (laughs) He was choking on the blood. His face, sorry, his face, drop in the cup, he spilt it all down his clothing, staining all of it. And with his head, hands to his throat, literally like this, he fell at the feet of Esther and he died. At that I woke up and I knew immediately the Holy Spirit was showing me that Esther's banquet table was a prophetic picture of the communion table where Haman would choke. Now I want to show you this. Mordecai, (laughs) this gets amazing. I've just been in tears reading all of this. Mordecai is a picture of Jesus. In Esther 2 2 verse 5 it says, "Now Now there was in the citadel of Susa, a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jair, the son of Shemai, the son of Kish. 
Now, I'm going to show you what their names mean. Mordecai means crushed and oppressed. Crushed and oppressed. Jair means he enlightens and exposes. Shimai means renowned and famous. Kish means a snare. Benjaminite means son of the right hand. Collectively, their, ma- their names put together read, he that is renowned and famous, the son of the right hand, will be crushed and oppressed for he will enlighten and expose the snare. He, Mordecai is our picture of Jesus in the last days. I want you to see this because we read Esther like as though it was yesterday, but it's actually a prophetic foreshadow of the church today. With Esther going to the banquet table, with Mordecai, he's the one that exposes the snare with Haman. And today, I'm sure you and I can both recognise there is a principality of Haman working across the United States, working across Australia, working across the nations of the earth. Haman is alive. And I believe right now the Lord is raising up his church as Queen Esther to bring Haman to the table where he will choke on the blood. Listen to this, Esther, her name means a star. Interestingly, Haman's wife's name, Zeresh, also means a star. She is the opposite of the true bride of Christ. She is the spirit of feminism that is raising its ugly head in the earth today. And many women get angry at me with that. And I'm like, listen, you need to actually look into the roots of feminism. They are demonic at the very core. The bride of Jesus is arising as the true star in these last days. (laughs) Esther's Hebrew name, Hadassah, means a myrtle. And this is what just astounded me. The, The root word for Hadassah is Hadam, and it means footstool. Psalms 110 verse 1 says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Mordecai, son of the right hand. Sit at my right hand, there is Mordecai, until I make your enemies a footstool to your feet. God is using his bride in this hour. This is both sons and daughters. The Lord is anointing his bride in this hour with this mantle of Esther to bring Haman to the table. I want to hear you. I want to show you Haman. My Nate like saved my notes in here and they're tiny. That's why I'm bending down. Haman. His name means magnificent, illustrious, and a multitude of noise. A multitude of noise. Social media, (laughs) the news. We have a multitude of noise in our earth right now. And it's interesting because Haman lifts himself up as magnificent. Think of who does that, Lucifer, the star of the morning. He said, I want to be above the stars of God. I want to be above them. And yet God is laughing in his face. I'm going to raise up my stars, my bride of Jesus in these last days, and they will mock and spit in the face of Haman. (laughs) (laughs) Haman's father's name was uh, Hamadatha. And he was an Agagite. And listen to this. That means he that troubles the law. We have lawlessness right now all across the earth. I had a friend write to me last night and she works as a midwife in Australia. She's like, Christy, I don't know what to do. I'm being signed on to these these issues in our, sorry, abortions in our hospitals. This is in Australia. This isn't just America. And they are literally bringing abortions. I'm talking late-term abortions in our hospitals in Australia, not in the abortion clinics, in the hospitals. And they have doctors and midwives serving as the abortionists. She said last week they had a 26-week-old baby delivered, alive. And you know what the doctor said? Lawlessness. Take the baby into the fridge. Put the baby into the fridge. And the woman held the baby and cried. This is what's happening all across the earth, behind the doors. Not just even with what we're seeing, but behind the doors. We're seeing this lawlessness erupt. It is the principality of Haman in our day. Agagite. So Haman was an Agagite. And there's a whole amazing story with this, but 
I want, do you guys have three hours? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Agagite. So Haman was an Agagite, which comes from the name King Agag, which Saul, God instructed Saul to kill all of the Amalekites. What did Saul do? He spared King Agag. And from King Agag came Haman. And Haman, sorry, Agagite or Agag means violence. And also to wring and squeeze the life out of. This is what we're seeing take place right now. And if you can pull back the eyes of the spirit, you would see we, we have this principality of Haman and we have to recognise who we're dealing with so that we know the tools and the solutions through the blood of the lamb, which is literally the communion table. I really believe the Lord is bringing us into a place right now as the body of Christ. Like we keep hearing Esther, right? Who's hearing Esther all the time? It's because the Lord's highlighting this, the banquet table. He's saying this is the weapon. And I feel like, like I said before, we have literally treated this like a ritual. We just go to church on Sundays. But I believe God is bringing us into a place in this hour where we're going to be taking the blood of the Lamb every single day, every single hour, and drawing from the power that is in this, that is in the body and the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read this to you. Esther 5, verse 1 to 7. If you don't mind bearing with me for just a moment, I want to show you something. On the third day, Esther put on her royal attire. In the scripture, that word actually means royal power. (laughs) She put on her royal power and stood in the inner court of the palace across from the king's quarters. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the royal courtroom facing the entrance. As soon as the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, she found favour in his sight. The king extended his gold scepter, and that actually means authority and dominion. He extended his authority and dominion to her. And actually, King Ahasuerus represents the world today, which means God's going to bring us into places where the kings of the earth will extend their authority to us. What is it, Queen Esther? The king inquired. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be done to you. If it pleases the king, Esther replied, may the king and Haman come today to the banquet I have prepared for the king. Hurry, commanded the king, and bring Haman so we can do as Esther has requested. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And as they drank their wine, the king said to Esther, what is your petition? It will be given to you. He says it a second time. I find that interesting. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be fulfilled. Esther replied, this is my petition and my request. If I have found favour in the sight of the king and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfil my request, may the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for them. Then I will answer the king's question. I want to pause for a moment because when I was reading that and studying it, I'm like, why did Esther delay? What was the reason why she delayed? There has to be a reason. Why did she have the two banquets? And the Holy Spirit led me on this really long study journey, like five days long. I'm like, wow. Led me on this study journey. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, was it because she was afraid? Was she scared? Her life was on the line. Not just her life, but the lives of all of her people. Was she intimidated by the king? I honestly believe when she put that royal power on, it was a picture of the cross again. It was stepping into the wonder-working power of the cross. And she had this strength and courage within her as she went before the king. So I had to sit there and question, surely it wasn't the fact that she was afraid that she delayed. And this is what the Holy Spirit began to show me. The following day of the second banquet, when Haman would eventually be hung, it fell on the date of Nisan 17. Now, if you've looked into the Hebraic dates, and all of the Jewish holidays, it actually overlapped Passover. So she was in the middle of Passover, which again points to Jesus. She's in the middle of Passover and she delays a day, which really represents, if you want to think about it for just a moment, the Saturday, the day of death, where Jesus is already dead in the ground. And I'm sure she was afraid. I'm sure she was thinking, this may not work. 
but we're going to wait. And Esther waited one day because as a Jewish girl, she would have grown up knowing the Hebrew dates. She would have understood the dates. She would have known tomorrow is Nisan 17. Let me show you what Nisan 17 represents. It's the day that the Red Sea parted for the Israelites. It is the day Pharaoh and his armies were crushed in the Red Sea, in the ocean of the blood. It is a day of deliverance. And Esther knew, I really believe she knew. She's like, I'm stepping into this day of deliverance because I am prophesying that me and my people will walk out of Egypt prophetically. We're gonna walk out of this and we're gonna step through the blood of Jesus through the Red Sea, through the parting of the Red Sea. So Haman was hung that next day. But what I find amazing is after the first banquet, Haman goes, he goes home, to his wife, Zeresh. Zeresh, remember, means golden star. And he goes home to Zeresh and he plans to kill Mordecai that night. And you know what had happened? Before that took place, Esther and Mordecai and the Jews, they fasted for three days. And that fast, there's actually a word in the Hebrew language that says rend. They rendered the heavens through their fast. And through that, when we move forward to the place where the night where Mordecai, sorry, Haman was setting up a gallows that very night, the night before Nisan 17, he was setting up a gallows. There was a gallows being built, 75 foot tall, to hang Mordecai on it. But they had fasted and they had rendered the heavens. And as they rendered the heavens, the king's sleep was interrupted. And the king's sleep, it says his sleep was interrupted. And God showed me, he said, Christy, that's because I rendered the heavens. I rendered the heavens for them. And as I woke him up, he was able to not sleep through the plans of Haman, but recognise, hey, Mordecai did something for me. And that next morning, Haman is humiliated. He has taken through an entire day of humiliation. It's my favourite part. Take it through an entire day of humiliation and it's his last day, Nisan 17. And that night, Esther brings him to the table once more, knowing, knowing that it was Nisan 17, the day of deliverance, of walking through the Red Sea. And she brings him to the table and he chokes on the blood. Do you see that? He chokes on the blood on Nisan 17. Let me show you one last thing. The date of Nisan 17 is also the day that Jesus was resurrected. He was resurrected on Nisan 17 as a prophetic picture of His complete annihilation of the spirit of Haman over the earth, over Satan, over every single demonic principality. It was Colossians 2.15. Jesus paraded the principalities and humiliated them. I want you to get this. The blood is our weapon in this hour. Do you see it? When we bring Haman to the table, we decree you have been done. You are finished. It is finished over America. It is finished over our children. It is finished. I want you to stand up. I believe God wants to do something right here and right now. Revelations 12, 11, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I want you to lift up a battle cry in a moment. I've done this before, but I feel like there is something that breaks in the atmosphere when we lift up a battle cry. And what we are lifting up is the blood of the Lamb. We are beholding the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world because we need the Lamb. We need His blood. We need His blood. His blood that speaks a better word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna count to three and you're gonna lift up a battle cry of victory over the spirit of Haman, over America, over your children. I want you to declare it over your children. It is finished, Haman. It is finished over my children. It is finished over my grandchildren. It is finished over America, over the United States of America. Lift it up. Sit down.
It is finished. 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 To tell us die. In Jesus' name. Lou, I don't know if you want to share anything right now. This is a stunning moment because I was praying and I felt tonight there's going to come a moment when the whole place would begin to shout, it is finished. I had no idea. I believe in the spirit. This is becoming the message. The blood has overcome witchcraft. Every power, every curse. I, I, I think we're going to take some communion for a moment. Just stay standing with me. For 18 years, we stood in front of the Supreme Court praying, Ple I plead your blood over my sins, the sins of my nation. God end abortion, send revival to America. I believe the blood broke a spiritual power over the Supreme Court. It fell. I heard today, someone told me a million babies have been saved in the States. I, I can't confirm that, but I do believe that in the midst of this decree of destruction and now coming with the birth pill, the, the, the one day pill or whatever, I believe out of that crowd, out of those babies, there are Moseses who are being raised up for such a time as this. Don't li listen to the lie that now it's become worse because it's gone to the States. I wanna to declare to you that Satan will rage all the more because when he's cast down from heaven in Revelation 12 because of the blood of the lamb, he comes down to the earth and woe to the earth. In other words, the devil is raging, but really it's manifesting the witchcraft that's going on. What's amazing is that on February 2nd, February 2nd, 2022, so two, 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 two. Uh, a Nigerian prophetess named Falaki, she had the dream that she was in front of the Supreme Court taking the tape off of my mouth, the life tape. And she put over my forehead, it is finished. And she knew that Roe v. Wade had ended. But instantly when I heard it, I knew this. It is finished. The blood has overcome. The blood has overcome. So I begin to connect with this woman named uh, 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 Falaki. She's a prophet to me, like a prophet to me. And the woman that I then connected with was this Jenny Donnelly, who's creating this movement with this Don't Mess With Our Kids and a million Esters on the mall. I didn't know it, but Falaki's church, their statement over their church is, it is finished. The name of their church is Collective. She meets Jenny Donnelly. Jenny Donnelly's church is named Collective. And their motto for their church is to tell us done. It is finished. Could it be that this Esther is a right? to break the witchcraft, which was the dream that I had that Esther's were gonna strike the Nazgul. And they're going on the Day of Atonement. I feel tonight, we're gonna to take communion and I, I wanna make sure I'm, I, I, I'm running in, in tandem with you, Nate. I felt tonight something was gonna take place that will prepare the way for a breakthrough against transgenderism. Now, again, our fight's not people. Principalities and powers. A lie, a spirit of delusion has sweeping through this whole nation. It's not normal. 
This is, it's never been seen before. And what's striking is they didn't plan it this way, but on Sunday, Easter Sunday, they're calling this National Transgender Visibility Day. Did you hear that? This is Good Friday, where the blood is applied. And Jesus says, it is finished. I feel Colorado Springs is a high place for spiritual warfare, not arrogance, not shouting at the devil, but declaring the victory of the blood. I feel something is going on. And not only that, with the three-day Esther fast that has been called the 11th, 12th, and 13th of, uh, of, um, of April, a three-day Esther fast, and then Esther's going to the mall, going to their capitals. Do you know what day is the National LGBT Day? April 13th. I believe they changed it to the 12th because of a Saturday so they can do their gatherings. I believe God has set down, set up a Haman Esther showdown. I believe we're in a day. I'll share one more story. I've felt for years that God is going to do something in New England. And I was praying concerning Passover this year. And I was just in New England. And we've been carrying this thing called the Great Communion Revival. That my friend Chris Berglund dreamed about many years ago. And... There's this passage in Luke 22 where it said, said um, where Jesus sent his disciples, John, uh, Peter and John, into the city and said, you'll find a man carrying a jug of water. He will tell you where the Passover will be held. Chuck Pierce prophesied in 2019 there's coming a plague to America. And it will enter into a decade of Passovers. And every Passover will be critical. I prayed, Lord, where is the Passover you want me to hold this year? The Lord spoke to my heart and said, Lou, don't plan it. I'll send you a man. Who's carrying the jug of water? Three nights, three mornings ago, I was praying, God, where can I hold the Passover? Send me the man who's holding the jug of water. Instantly, I get a text from a man who says, I had a dream about communion. And we've been holding communion for four years. And there's a stadium coming, but there are side rooms that we must first take communion in, the side rooms, so that we can get to the stadium. He said, I believe the side rooms are communion gatherings of altars. And there's to be a communion gathering, and we must go then from there, we must go to the stadium, the Day of Atonement the million women on the mall to ply the blood. And the Lord said, he's the man. I tell him the story. He says, we already have a 1,200 seat place. We can move the tables, the chairs out of the way, and we could put the lamb at the center of the throne. We're going on the 22nd to New England. Really, it's not New England. It used to be New England. Actually, they have churches mobilized in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. On the first day of Passover the Eve, 22nd, we're going. But then, as I'm praying, another man instantly calls me in New Hampshire. And he had a dream, and his story is remarkable. But he said, we've been holding prayer for years, 24-7, in a town called Salem, New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, New Hampshire, in Salem, New Hampshire, there is a temple, and it's called the Temple of Witchcraft. And they've got 300,000 followers. 
But he said, we've been in a place of a hill, ex almost exact elevation as the temple of witchcraft. And the name of the place that we've been praying in the third floor 24 seven is called Zion's Hill. Yeah. I heard this. He said, I had a dream. And in this dream, I went up this, I was hiking up this ma uh, mountain and it was very difficult. And I was getting up to, uh, going up to the top of the mountain. All of these, all of these people were coming down the hill, discouraged, depressed. We're giving up. Nothing's changing. It's New England. But he keeps pressing on and he gets, and he gets uh, up to the top of the mountain and there's a 15 foot woman there. Now we're not talking about women, we're talking about a spirit of witchcraft of Jezebel. So let's please not say we're attacking women. We're talking about a spirit that is seeking to dominate this whole culture and its ideologies that are being released are Haman's ideologies. And he said that woman mocked me, says you'll never do anything with me up here. And he said, then he lifted up his voice and said, Jesus is the king of all kings. And she raged against him. And then he shouted, and his splendor and glory. And she exploded, he said, into a million pieces. And suddenly all these people were running up back up the mountain because they've been delivered from the depression, delivered them from this. We're going to New Hampshire in a 1200 seat tent. And we're gonna take our stand. And he said, already I'm hearing pastors. Pastors are closing down their, down their whole weeks to travel, to pray day and night, daring to believe that New England can see a breakthrough where nobody else believed they could. I believe as we lift up the blood on that day, something is going to break with this witchcraft. We're coming to the place of the honoring of the blood. Is Chris Berglund here? Because we're gonna take communion. Is Chris here? Is, uh, Chris had a, uh, is he here? Chris had, uh, tells me the story of Sadhu. He's a prophet. Where is he? Is he hiding? Anyway, and he said, I was, I, Sadhu, he says, I was worshiping for two hours and got caught up into heaven. Said two angels brought me into the worship in heaven. And he said, whenever they sang the song of the blood, all of the heavens bowed down. All of the heavens bowed down. And he asked the angels, why? Does all the angelic realm bow down at the blood? And, he said, and the angel says, in heaven, everyone bows down at the blood. The only place they don't is on earth. Whoa. The only place people don't, do, they don't bow down to the blood is, are the people on the earth. There is coming a lamb being beheld who is at the center of the throne. Yes. I tell you, Pharaoh is going to have to bow down. You see, the Pharaohs are in the skies in the heavens, and then there are the Pharaohs on the earth, the earthly powers and the heavenly powers. We had a dream given to us, and in this dream, it said, tell Pharaoh, and then speaks to the sons of God, you are my sons, you are my firstborn, you are my princes. The great communion revival cannot be stopped. I believe, just like it was in Egypt, there is coming a jailbreak. The pharaohs in the heavens and the pharaohs on the earth, governmental figures and the like, they're going to have to face the fact that what happened in Egypt when the blood was applied, 
is going to happen in the earth. Satan will fall from heaven. The blood doesn't just save our families and our children. The blood judges the gods of Egypt. And the blood will judge the gods of America. The, this is why this, this message is coming to Colorado Springs. It's the weapon that he's given to us. And we are telling Pharaoh the great communion revival cannot be stopped. I believe we're in a moment that we're going to take communion. How many of you have your communion cups and everything? Do you have those? Do they have them? I really felt this is an invitation that the Holy Spirit's doing right now. This is an invitation of the blood. And just briefly, as the communion cups are being handed around, I wanted to quickly share with you a dream that goes off the back of what Lou was sharing about Atonement Day. This year on Atonement Day, on October 12th, 2024, I had a dream four years ago on exactly October 12th, 2020. And in the dream, I was standing in Washington, D.C., in Washington, D.C., <laughs> and I was on a stage with Lou. I had never met Lou. Maybe, hang on, we bumped into each other once through a hallway. Lou doesn't remember, but I do. Um, we, we bumped into a hallway, but I had never met him before this dream. And in the dream, I'm standing on a stage, and you're on my right, and in front of us is a million women. I had no idea about this vision that he's sharing. None. This is four years ago. Four years ago, where am I repeating again? <laughs> okay, October 12th, 2020. In the morning of October 12th, 2020, we happened to be in Washington, D.C. You guys remember 2020, how crazy it was. I don't think anyone can ever forget. So we were following Sean Foyt. He was having a worship gathering there. And Amy Coney Barrett was being... Um, anointed as the new judge. And so I was like, we have to go. We have to go to this because on the eve of that night, Amy Coney Barrett was coming in and we're here for, a, you know, we're here to see Roe v. Wade fall. So I'm seven months pregnant and waddle along and I'm like, we're going. And I have a dream that morning before Sean's gathering and the night before Amy Coney Barrett is appointed. So your, your dream is on the 12th. Yes. Yeah, no, 11th, so, but it was in the morning, sorry, of the 12th, early morning of the 12th. And so we go to the gathering that afternoon, but in the morning I have this dream and I'm standing on a stage with Lou and he's to my right and in front of us is a sea of a million women and there's guys there too. A million women, mostly I can see. And I knew it in the dream and I wrote it in my journal, there was a million women. And Lou is standing to my right and he's got the microphone and he hands me the microphone. And I always do this little impression of you, but he goes, prophesy, Christy. <laughs> In the dream, prophesy, Christy. <laughs> do I do it good? Yeah, <laughs> prophesy. So anyway, he hands me the microphone. And as I go to speak, a woman appears to my left. She appears to my left and she morphs into Ursula from The Little Mermaid. You guys know who I'm talking about? The sea witch. The one who steals the voice of Ariel, right? Do you want to know what Ursula means? She bear. She is the counterfeit of the true Esthers. I'm not, well, I am an Esther, let's just, amen. But anyway, in the dream, she steals the microphone out of my hands. And I get intimidated and I shrink back. And then Lou, you look at me and you go, what are you doing? <laughs> Get it off her. I'm like, oh. and as he says that, this roar begins to rumble in the pit of my spirit. And it begins to rumble. So I jump out to my left to grab it off her. And there's a wrestle on the stage. She's got her inky, um, what do you call it? Like ink all over the stage and everything. I grab it off her. And as I do, not a word comes out of me, but a roar. You want to know what's interesting about that, Ursula and Ariel? Ariel means lion of God. The roar of the lion comes out of my mouth and roars over the crowd of the million women. 
As it hits the crowd, it's like this boom, 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 boom. It hits them like a, what do you call it? Like a sound wave. And I see it hitting them. As it hits them, the roar erupts out of their voices. And the roar comes out of their voices and they roar back at us. As the sea of women roar, and I'm talking, it's deafening. A deafening, like I put my hands over my ears in the dream. It's deafening roar comes back and it hits us again, like a sound wave, boom, 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 hits us on the stage. We fall back in the dream and Ursula dissipates. She's gone. Jezebel gone. See you later, Jezebel. She's gone. And I see we turn around. We're flat on the stage, mind you. I turn around and look back behind us and this roar, the sound of the roar, hits the Supreme Court behind us. As it hits the Supreme Court, I see a gargoyle, like a principality. It falls to the ground and smashes into a million pieces. Listen. This was on four years ago I had this dream, on the day of October 12th, 2020. And we had a battle, didn't we, over the date of October 12th this year. Over going to the mall, there was a warfare. And you came to us one day and said, do we change the date? I said, do not change it, it's atonement day. We are keeping atonement day. I don't care what the, what the enemy tries to war against us. We are having the mall that day and we've got the mall that day. So that day after I had the dream, you hunt me down on the mall. You hunted me down on the mall. You remember that? (laughs) No. He hunted me down on the mall because I'd released a word about Esther in 2020, a prophetic spoken word. You had heard it and you knew I was there. So he came and found me on the mall right before he gets up on the stage. And I'm like, my jaws dropped because I was like, I just had this crazy dream last night and Lou was in it. And so I didn't tell him the dream because I was like, I don't want him to think. Anyway, so (laughs) as soon as you finish meeting me, he gets up on the stage with Sean Foyt and shares for the first time the vision of the million women coming to the mall. And Jenny Jenny was there as well. So I was there, Jenny Donnelly, we were both in the crowd. And I just, Nate and I, because the only person that knew about it was Nate, our jaws both dropped, we looked at each other. <laughs> but the thing is, is it's not about me. This is about what God is doing in His daughters right now. Sons and daughters alike in the bride of Jesus. And this was marked, this is a tapestry that God was marking. And I share this not so that you will sit there and think, oh wow, that's a great dream, Chrissy. No, you are invited into this story. This is you. You were the women that I saw in the dream. You were the sons that I saw in the dream, the sons and daughters. You were the sons and daughters that I saw the roar of the lion come out of and hit the principalities of the earth. And so you are invited into this. This is about you. Every single one of you here today, you don't get away with it now. You've been invited into the story. You're coming. <laughs> so anyway, that's, I really felt like I needed to share that dream. Do you guys want to roar right now again? Yeah. Let's release the roar of the lion because I stand up. I want you to stand up. There is something about releasing the roar. And I feel like what I saw in the dream with the sound waves, it represents now. Now is a part of the sound wave, boom, 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 until we get to October 12th. So you are releasing the sound of the roar. And listen, you're taking this back to your houses. You're taking this back to your children, to your grandchildren, to your churches and communities. This isn't about just Nate and I and Lou. This is about you. God is releasing the roar of the lion through every single one of you here right now. It is the sound of victory through the blood of Jesus. It is the roaring blood of the lamb. You see, He came as the lamb. He's coming back as the lion and He's coming through you. Are you guys ready? We're gonna lift up the sound of the roar and I want you to recognise it is the Lion of the tribe of Judah roaring through me right now. Ariel, in Jesus' Name. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus! Jesus! Jesus, roar! Come on, 
Come on, keep it going for a minute. Keep it going for a minute. You know, Dutch Sheets had a vision or a dream years ago about communion. It was in a box. It was coming out of the box. What if this is the same for the church? What if tonight you came for simply that God wanted to get you out of that box? I just want to honour this man. He's going to lead us in communion. He is an Elijah to this generation. We're so grateful to have him here. Your revelation on the blood. Has said uh, it, it's cha- it shifted our lives in, in such a crazy way. We just want to honor you. We love you, Papa Lou. Thank you. Actually, the dream was this Dutch sheets, a dream was given. He saw a box, and the box said communion on it. And in the, in the, in the box was a bat that said on the bat, Ephesians 1 17, I'm going to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation on something that communion has been put in a box of a little crackers and juice once a month. But in the dream, the bat was used to destroy Baal. And the Lord says, I'm giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation on the power of communion to break curses off of her children. One woman in, in Portland, her daughter went into the LGBT lifestyle. And so in the spirit, she would take communion. She would draw a bloodline. And she, in her prayers, would say, I'm not coming to you, sweetheart. I'm pulling you over the bloodline. And she, that was her intercession. Oh, I'm telling you, there's gonna be a million women pulling their kids over the bloodline. You can't have them. God is releasing the revelation of the blood. When Jesus said, it is finished, principalities and powers were dislodged from their thrones. And I believe what the Lord is saying. He's saying that when we take communion, it's a, a reenactment, not just a memory, but a reenactment of the same power that when Jesus went to the cross. It's a reenactment of that same power. I see stadiums of communion gatherings and demonic powers falling at the sound of the, they overcame him by the blood of the, brothers and sisters, this little cup right here. I want you to begin to encourage you Take communion all the time. Jesus said, as often as you do this, he's saying it, I think he's saying, do it all the time because it's not just a symbol. I'm giving my body and my blood to you in real encounter. I've been on a little fast, little's the word. (laughs) And I was wakened by this still small voice and he says, my bread my body I offer to you. And it was one of the first times I've experienced the intimacy that he's actually giving himself to me in communion. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take communion today and we're gonna receive the body and blood of Jesus. My bread, my body, I offer to you. Tonight, God begins to break the pain of betrayal. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the body and he took the, the the bread and the cup and he gave it to his disciples whom he knew they were gonna all betray him that very night. In communion, I believe the Lord is releasing Grace from, a, from one who experienced betrayal to basically bless those 
who have betrayed you. We believe great deliverance is coming when we begin to forgive those who have wounded us. I believe that there's coming deliverance, even tonight, when we take this and we say, Lord, we're gonna stop accusing and we're gonna be better blood people. Yeah. Begin to speak a better blood. Yeah. Tonight, we're gonna to believe as we take communion that this blood was not shed for 99% of our shame. Yeah. And you hold on to the 1% that you tell nobody about because it's so, so dark inside of you. Hallelujah. Come on, tonight. The blood was shed not for 99%. Come on, that hidden thing of shame. Tonight, let's believe. Tonight, we break out of the shame, declaring one man has done it all. Come on. Cleanse from all shame. Can we do, believe this? For today? And then tonight, Jesus said, the scripture said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. We've been praying for a Passover for America. But the demonic powers also see the blood. Tonight, I want to declare the blood of Jesus over Haman's ideology of transgenderism. And something begins to break with a prophecy given to us of 100,000 LGBTQ who will be saved and transformed by the power of God. And I see Satan falling. The greatest revival in the scriptures, we're convinced, is seen in Revelation chapter 12, where the accuser of the brethren is accusing, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony, testifying to what the blood has done. It is finished. When we speak, it is finished. We're testifying. When that happens, it says, and Satan fell, the accuser fell to the earth. And what happened? A great shout in heaven takes place. This is the picture of the greatest revival that we have not yet seen, but is coming. And the heavens declared, now the salvation and the kingdom and the power of God has come. What's happened? Satan has fallen from the second heaven because of the blood. And now the skies are clear and everyone can see Jesus. That's why he's come down to earth to rage. The greatest revival is coming when the church begins to get a revelation of honoring the blood like it's never been honored. Anybody want that revival? Everywhere. I want you to notice all over the Christian worship scene, they're singing songs of the blood. Why? It's in the spirit. The great communion revival is rolling in. I'd like to be starting right here tonight in Colorado Springs. Let us gather to the table of the Lord. On the night Jesus was betrayed, He took the bread and he broke it and said, this is my body that is broken for you. Right now, we thank you for your presence, Jesus, just like you were with those disciples. And you showed us the way that in communion, we can forgive those who betrayed us. Right now, all over this place, I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to begin to just pray for those people that have betrayed you. Some of you can't get over that thing. Just lift your voices and just begin to say it all across this place. Father, forgive them. Come on, just get, begin, out loud. Say it with your mind. You, you see them. Father, be, forgive them. They know not what they do. Lift your voices. Just begin to lift your voices. Father, forgive them. Lord, I pray for a loosing right now of the agony of that pain of betrayal. Break it right now in the name of Jesus. 
How many of you would say, I've got this issue of betrayal and it wounds me? Would you just raise your hands all over this place? You are carrying this deep wound of betrayal. Come on, lift, lift your hands. She said, God, so many. I want you to turn to one another. Those with their hands, and I say, begin to break the power of this betrayal and we lose forgiveness. Come on, go up. Lift your, keep your hands up. Pray for those brothers and sisters right now. Hurt in churches. Hurt in marriages. Molestation. Things you never told anybody. And that bitterness seeks to creep in. But tonight we declare in the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood, these things are being broken right now. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. just on October 12th. Lord, right now, we're going to pray. And I want you to bring that 1% of shame, that nagging thing that you always feel unclean. And the devil blackmails you. And you'll be singing worship songs, but inwardly, you feel unclean. The blood of Jesus right here tonight. Come on, lift your hands and just say, Lord, I am receiving the blood that didn't, yeah, that didn't just die for 99% of my sins and my shame. Tonight, I'm reaching up and receiving the 1%. That issue in my soul maybe happened even last night. That thing that next you, we break it in Jesus' name. We lose the blood. Come on. Shout it out, it is finished. The blackmail of the devil is over with. The blackmail of the devil is over with. One man has done it all. Just keep singing that for a moment.
Jesus, we betrayed you, took the bread. Lord, we bless this blood, this bread. You said, this is my body that was broken for you. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus appeared to those guys, invited them in to break bread. I see a mighty invitation to communion right now, sweeping across this nation. Those disciples, Jesus was going to turn away and leave, and they begged him, stay with us to break bread. Can you right now beg him? Just lift your voices and begin to beg him. Come in. Come in, come in to our table. Lord, I'm asking you to stay with us. And when they broke the bread, when he broke the bread, their eyes were open. When you eat this bread, would you say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes to behold a new revelation of Jesus. Come on, lift your voices and cry out. God, we pray, open our eyes. A revelation of the body and the blood of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, take of the bread. My bread, my body, I offer to you. Receive him right now. And the night he was betrayed, there it is again. He took the cup and he blessed it and says, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which has been poured out for the sins of many. lift your cup Jesus made a vow to those brothers I will not drink of this vine until I drink it with the, with the kingdom he's on a major Nazarite fast waiting for the full dimension of communion union with you and today we can receive in remembrance and reenactment blood of Jesus, forgiveness of sins, and an encounter with the Lord. I want you to believe right now as you take this blood, a veil is being ripped and you can see his face. Come on, drink of the blood of Jesus Christ. When we did Communion Colorado, spontaneously, someone in the back of the crowd just shouted, it is finished. And that Episcopalian priest <laughs> shouted, it is finished, and the whole place erupted. I think Communion is an explosion of joy unspeakable. <laughs> Shout it with me, it is finished. I feel like the Father gets so much joy when we're free. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I just, now that I'm a father, I'm like, man, I, I, there's nothing more that I love than seeing my kids just be kids and just do the things that are on their heart. And I, I feel it grieves Him when we just don't know we can do that. 
when we are all bound up by the things of our past, religion, all those things, and it gives Him so much joy in moments like that when we go, you know what? I'm trading it, I'm done. I, 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 wanna, I wanna just keep this moment going for a moment because I had a dream with the blood and it hasn't happened yet. There was this man called Matt Gober my father-in-law ran a, like a, a bikey outreach church. Christy's dad, it's a true story. You wouldn't see that if you look at her, that she was a, an outreach pastor's kid. Her dad was a, an outlaw in Australia and uh, got saved, set free, started this church. And he would just bring in these preachers that were these wild rogue preachers. And this guy from America called Matt Gober, Southern guy. And he came and he preached at the church and I was just remembering this just the other day. It didn't connect with my dream. And he was talking about the blood of Jesus. And back then I remember going, I I couldn't connect it. And he was talking about people coming down the front and immersing their lives in the blood again and coming out different. And I was just thinking about that a few days ago. I'm going, that was my dream. What if we're in a moment right now where the Lord was leading the church into a place of cleansing. What if you can't really step into, we're talking about the new era, a new season, a new epoch. What what if you can't really practically do that if you haven't first got rid of everything else? I don't know. I just feel like tonight the Lord still wants to do some business. Can we go there just for a little bit? Then we're going to end with some fun. I I just feel like, no, 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 something's not finished. We've done the, the blood. We've taken communion. But now we're gonna we're gonna do some prophetic acts based upon what we just did. The communion is it's covenant. Blood is covenant. I remember when Christy and I were going through a really rough season. We actually it was 2016, I think it was. We just started our ministry, and you know when you do something like that, all hell breaks loose. And I don't know. I thought I knew what warfare was, but I didn't obviously. And I, <laughs> we're just fighting all the time. Things were just falling apart. Finances, kids were getting sick. I didn't know what was going on. I uh, had to break ties with some family members who were just, you know, for so long, we just had so much Jezebelic pressure around us. And I didn't know what to do. I was just crumbled. And I went down to the local bottle which in Australia, that's the bottle shop, okay? And I've tried to find the most expensive bottle of wine I could. I didn't know what I'm looking for. I have no idea what's good, what's not. Found this bottle. When Christy and the girls were asleep, I went out in the front and I cried my eyes out, walked around the house and poured this wine around the perimeter of our home. I said, God, please, come do something to shift this situation. I feel this way over America right now. I feel this way over the nations right now, Australia, but I feel this way over the family. I feel this way over you. I feel that the Lord is like in this moment where He's like, you know, when you get to rock bottom, it's okay. The saving grace is this. When you're at rock bottom, it's the blood that's gonna get you out. It's the only thing that's gonna get you out. When America is in a time where people are like, America's... It's, it's, it's done its dash. Like it's, it's made its decision, okay? No. The blood speaks a better word. Over that situation you're going through, the blood speaks a better word. And I felt it when you came in tonight. Man, some heaviness is coming in. You've come here. And I knew that that moment we went into the grief that we begin to kind of lift the lid up. But what if there's a little bit more that God wants to do? Are you guys okay with that for a moment? Deliverance is not a scary word to me. People make it out to be something like, oh, isn't that kind of a bit of a weird thing? If, if, if I need deliverance, there's something wrong with me. No, it means the enemy's been after you. Do you know how much deliverance I've needed in my life, especially in ministry? A lot. A lot. Someone's like, hey, can I pray, pray over you? And they say to you, hey, I feel like let's, let's pray for this. Hey, okay, I'm putting my hand up. Because when you go through stuff, you collect stuff. There's no shame in that. You're not the problem. You've got a devourer. You've got an accuser. And tonight, the blood speaks a better word that silences him. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I just feel like there is something the Lord wants to hit. I don't even know. I haven't written it fully down. I just knew the Lord was saying tonight that we need to do business. And I want to just call out a few things. And if you feel like, you know what? Even before you say anything, I just need to come down here. 
to imagining that this is that river of blood and you need to say, God, I just wanna recovenant with you. My family, my marriage, my kids, I just need to recovenant with you. I don't even know what that fully means other than I just need to make a fresh covenant with you. I remember hearing this amazing story of this missionary going to Africa to this tribe that for many, many, many like centuries had been under the power of this, this witchcraft thing, this black magic thing. Kids were not being, kids were dying in the womb. The place had turned into a desert. She didn't know what to do. And that's where I got the idea from. She got a bottle of wine. She poured it out over the land with the leaders of the tribe and that curse broke. Why? This covenant trumps every other covenant. If you have come here tonight and you know you've entered into covenant with some things that maybe you shouldn't have, it's okay. Because tonight we're recovenanting with the Lord. It's gonna override those covenants. No one taught me this. I grew up in a home, very narcissistic home. I grew up around a lot of spiritual stuff that wasn't good from the age of two to 11. I was having nightmares running down my street. I couldn't stay at kids' homes. When I was in my teens, I was seeing demons with my eyes open as I played music. I was in covenant to something that I grew up in, but I was in covenant to something. I was in bondage. But when I came into covenant with Jesus, it didn't have any power anymore. And I feel like the Lord just wants to, wants us to just recovenant with Him. And it's going to begin to bring some deliverance. You know, when you know there's something going on, when you know there's a spirit of torment or something going on, you, you, you're just begging God to, just to set you free. And I feel that tonight. Because so God set us free. So Jesus, we thank you for your blood. And now we just, as a prophetic act, as we're coming down the front here, He's imagining the river of blood, the red river of blood, <laughs> just flowing over our lives and families and generations. God, you're just resetting things. You're reforming things. Just say it after me, God, tonight, we re-covenant with you. We re-covenant with you. And we're going to say a few more things. God, break all other covenants in the mighty name of Jesus. Break all inferior covenants now in the name of Jesus. Covenants of divination that have been over your family and your family line for generations. Break now in the name of Jesus. If you need to say this, don't just get me saying it, you say it too. If you know this has been going on, that Jezebelic spirit's been in your family line for generations, you know there's some narcissistic things and you're like, God, I know that's not me, but it things that, I break that narcissistic Jezebelic spirit in the name of Jesus. We uncovenant from Jezebel right now in the name of Jesus. We do no longer tolerate her around us or in our homes any longer, in our marriages, in our relationships, in the name of Jesus, we uncovenant from her tonight. This is the thing about Jezebel. Her name means unhusbanded. Unhusbanded. Who are we? We're the bride. We have a husband. That's right. So tonight, we're entering into marriage with our bridegroom again. Like John 3.29 speaks about a, a bride waiting for her groom. God, we just uncovenant from all addictions and all things that we've allowed, compromise. We uncovenant from them now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
There are some people here tonight, I just feel like there are, there are addictions that you want broken and you're desperate. There's some prescription medication addictions. I break them now in the Name of Jesus. I break them now in the Name of Jesus. That thing has been lording itself over you for too long and you're just done with it. I break any addiction, sexual addiction, pornography addiction. Go now in the Name of Jesus. We are uncovered from you because we are pure. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart under God. The Lord is cleaning and cleansing up His bride because these are the, this is the day we're in. We're the pure spotless bride because He needs a pure spotless bride to take down the powers of the day. God, deliver us from the spirit of religion. We uncovenant from religion right now. It's been bullying us around for too long. It's been whispering in our ear. It's been caging us and muzzling us for too long. We uncovenant with religion and all counterfeit fathering, covering, and models of accountability to only bring bondage. We uncovenant from those things now. I believe we're entering a day where God wants us to call things out as they are. I'm done with beating around the bush with some of this stuff that I see. I'm like, I'm not sitting at Jezebel's table. I'm not doing it anymore. And no, no longer can you tolerate those, those things where you feel like you're meant to go and do this thing or be a part of this thing, but you feel compromised, you get the red flags. Stop writing off what you discern. You're a remnant for a reason. You pick up on things other people don't pick up on. You're meant to warn other people who may be not really quite sensitive as you to those things. So we need to step into that. We need to uncovenant from apologising for what we're called to do. Uncovenanting from running when we're meant to step into who God's called us to be. Lord, we covenant with You tonight. Our families, God. The Lord is healing families tonight. He's healing families tonight. He's healing families tonight. There are couples here tonight, like there are, things aren't good. God, You're healing. You're restoring. You're mending. Just as the body of Jesus was torn, it brings us into wholeness. God, restore what the enemy is trying to break and destroy in the mighty Name of Jesus. Clinical depression. I curse you now in the name of Jesus. Get off those people now in Jesus' mighty name. If that's you, depression, oppression, clinical, to stand up for a moment if you're brave enough to do so. I just need to pray this. I just feel like there's some. And the spirit of torment, the spirit of torment. Who goes to sleep at night and suddenly the voice starts up? Spirit of torment, we break you now. I silence your voice in the name of Jesus. I silence your voice now in the mighty Name of Jesus. You shall no longer keep them bound. You shall no longer whisper your lies to them. I break your false prophecies now in the mighty Name of Jesus. Can I get some men up here just to be catchers for a moment? Maybe like three or four of you. Stephen, I've got even uh, Charles. Yep, yeah, thank you, sir. Appreciate you. One more over the side. Thank you so much, warrior. Appreciate you, man. The Lord wants to break. Fire! In the mighty name of Jesus, we right now command that voice to leave. It will never come back. You have no authority. You have no right. It even affected your mother and sisters. I feel like the Lord's saying, I'm breaking that generational thing that's been over your family line. It is no longer who you are, says the Lord. I feel like even the Lord's saying, from this moment forward, get ready to hear that... Get ready for the Lord to visit you even in the night watches to whisper His love and affection over you. I'm resetting, I'm resetting minds. I'm resetting minds right now in the mighty Name of Jesus. It, your night seasons are no longer a place for the enemy to come and bring bondage to those who are called to be dreamers. Why does He come in the night seasons especially? Because in the last days, God's gonna pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. We're gonna dream dreams, it's an end time language. Talk to Lou, that's, you're gonna get dreams. You know this is a language we need. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on, the dreams to begin. Torment end, torment end. I see you, get out, in the name of Jesus. The 
there was someone over here, I don't know who it is. I'm not sure if they stood up or not. I literally saw a spirit of torment on you. I don't think you stood up. If there's any more in the room and you know, I, I, I've been having the spirit of torment and you know, you just need to get rid of it, you're done. You're like, I'm not sure what's gonna happen after this meeting tonight. I go home and the anxiety begins. The torment begins. Stay in this moment for a minute. Oh. <sighs> Holy Spirit. Freedom. 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 I need to walk around. This is. I break torment right now in the name of Jesus. I break that. Wow, what an ab- absolute travesty. The enemy would war against the dreamers. He'd war against those who'd be the mouthpieces of a new era, a new generation. Who was the one over here with clinical depression? Who was the one over here? That's you. I break that now in the name of Jesus. I break it. Get off her now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of torment, you must leave. You and your lies now. You have the mind of Christ, the Lord says. You have the mind of Christ. I break regret. I'm not sure. I feel like the, the enemy really hits you with like a, a play, a play. Like a, this is sort of like a bit of a scene of some stuff. Fire of heaven just come now in the name of Jesus. Fire of heaven come. Over this whole building now, fire. Fire of heaven. Fire of heaven come. Fire of heaven fall now in the mighty name of Jesus. Fire, fire, fire. Set your people free. Bless my brother. Father, set your people free in the mighty name of Jesus. Shokabra basabra toshaki. We're in this meeting once and I could feel the tension in the room. I knew that I needed to, sh- to simply pray and release freedom. And I could feel the resistance. And there was a woman sitting over to the left and she was in so much bondage, her, she was showing it. It was just, and I could feel just the absolute love of the father over her, just wanting to go and give her a hug and set her free. I just looked at her and said, be free. She fell over, back off her chair and started laughing, burst out laughing. Hadn't laughed in eight years. Eight years. What if we're entering the days with the blood? The blood is the only key we need this, that we see that begins to break open areas that the church has been in bondage. I have a friend of mine who runs a worship label. Well, he did and then he left it and he said, It grieves me that the church can sometimes be one of the most unhealthiest places because religion has made us accept and normalize things that we are meant to be free of. Can we do something else before we go any further? If you know there's something going on in your life, maybe it's in your marriage, in your kids, and you're like, "I, I, I can't leave here tonight with that thing anymore. And you know, you just need to get rid of it. Whatever it is, come and do business with the blood. Don't hold back. This is a moment. If you're desperate and you don't want that thing anymore, the blood speaks a better word. Come down the front and we're gonna pray once more. 
before we move on. And the Lord wants to set some more people free of some things. Just come down. There's still someone over here that I feel like you're in bondage like that woman and I need to lay hands on you. I just feel like I, I, we need to see some freedom. Is, let me see your face. Were you sitting over there? Wow. I break the hurt and the pain that people have put you in. I'm so sorry for what they put you through. Father, right now, set her free of the pain, the betrayal. The Father is just restoring your heart tonight. It's release. Wow. You've been told to shut up about those things. The Lord says tonight, release them to Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely the one I, th- I was feeling. Whatever it is, you come down the front saying, God, I'm doing business tonight. I'm immersing this in the blood. I'm not bringing this back home with me anymore. I'm done with this now. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Just begin to get in that place. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with being bullied by the enemy. I'm done with being bullied by the enemy when I'm called to be an overcomer. I'm done with being bullied by the enemy over and over and over and over. I'm done with just dealing with problems that the enemy throws my way. I'm done. Tonight, the Lord has given you the weapon of His blood. Go home, take communion with your family. Have those honest conversations you need to have. Just bear your heart to your wife, your husband, your friends and say, hey, this is what's been going on. But I have a solution I didn't know about and it's the blood of Jesus. Would you sit and have communion with me? Is there anything I can pray with you about? Is there anything I can, we can talk to the Lord and do business on tonight? This is your assignment from here tonight is to take this home. I can't even tell you how many times Christy and I have sat in brokenness have sat in absolute brokenness. Can we just be honest here tonight? There are no superhuman, superhero Christians. There is none, okay? We're all broken people in need of a Saviour. We all go through difficult circumstances. We all go through dark nights of the soul. And every single day we come before Him and we need the blood. My goodness, the Christian life is impossible without the blood. It is impossible without the power of the Spirit. And so to the Lord tonight, we're just bearing our all before you. Giving you the ugly, which you already know about, but we're just bringing it out to you and releasing it to you. And we enter into marriage with you tonight, Jesus. We enter into marriage to you, with you tonight, Jesus. Now let your freedom begin to transform and change our lives. Let this communion revival happen in us first so it can happen around us. Let the revelation of the blood and the finished work begin to transform our lives. Lord, heal bodies tonight. Restore bodies, restore minds. Burnt out pastors and leaders, let me just say something to you. Who's a burnt out pastor and leader and you're willing to admit it? Okay, come, just come over here, sir. Yeah. I love this. I love it. I, what, what would happen if we were just real about things? we get free of things quicker. Brother, I love you, man. (laughs) Broncos. 
You're from Denver? No? You're from Colorado Springs? Okay, just level this with me. People who go for the Broncos don't really like the Broncos. Is that true? <laughs> okay. I'm from Brisbane. We have a team called the Broncos as well, but they were actually good. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. I don't know. I don't follow American football yet. Yeah, Lord, I just thank you tonight. It's a big thing to, to, to say, you know, I've been burnt out. I, I, in the old system, everyone pulls on pastors to the point that they are depleted, their marriages fail or go under extreme pressure and they break. What the Lord is doing in this next season, He's thriving families again. The door before you was big enough for the whole family to walk through, not just you having to pour yourself out and be depleted for a congregation. And that's all we've known. That's all we've known is that model and that system. And I meet burnt out pastors and leaders all the time. And my heart goes, I've ne- I haven't not been a pastor in a very, very, very long time, 18 years or something. And my heart goes out to them because I know the pressure and the pull that people put on you. And right now we're in a moment where there's so many burnt out pastors and leaders across America. And what happens is, is, is if pastors and leaders don't realize that and step out of it, they step into moral failure. They, they, that's the natural thing. You want to escape the thing that you're having to deal with that you don't know how to escape. You don't have to tell people no anymore because you're expected to say yes. So then you burn out, you step into moral failure. I feel like the Lord is saying, I'm just going to pray over this, this mighty man, but I'm praying this over all pastors tonight. The Lord gives you permission. The Lord gives you permission to be refueled, refreshed and find the joy that He first gave you in the beginning again. I remove all pressure off you. I remove all labels that were placed upon you. All the expectations that came your way, all the weight, all the toll and all the trauma that came with that role, I break off you now in the mighty Name of Jesus. Uh, I feel like the Lord is actually saying of you, He's actually reminding you of something that He gave you back in the beginning that you've forgotten about. And it caused you to come alive, man. I, I, I just see you in the Spirit and you're like a freight train. And that system tried to tame you, bro. Tried to tame you. The Lord says that evangelistic edge you have, the way that you speak, the way that you just so... Na- the Lord says He's, He's given you back your swagger in the Spirit. In the mighty Name of Jesus, refuel, refresh now in Jesus' mighty Name. Amen. Every pastor and leader of this place, the Lord is refreshing you. I just have a few words of knowledge real quick, just simple ones I, I, was, I put down here before and then we're gonna move and shift gears. Is there a mica here tonight? Is there a mica here at all? I didn't feel like it was live stream. I just, I just heard the name Micah. Anyone have a son, husband, wife, anyone here, Micah? Yeah, okay. Is there a mic or is it the sun? You sun? Mm. It was a really simple word, but I heard Micah is a Micaiah. And you know Micaiah in the Bible? He was the one the king said, I don't like him because he tells me what I don't want to hear. There's a prophetic anointing on his life. And uh, I'm not sure what age he is or anything like that, but I just feel like that the Lord is doing something and stirring him up. I was, I, I feel it is for him. He's a Micaiah. Go, go read up about Micaiah. He carries a really unique anointing and he's gonna, he's called to keep the body of Christ on us. Let me just put it that way. He's a, he's a groundbreaker. And so I just bless you guys with that. I'm just sharing what I get. Okay, that's all I got. <laughs> the last, uh, second last thing I got. The Lord is healing someone who's come here tonight praying on behalf of a sick child. I'm not sure who that is. Someone here and there's someone else here. Can you please come down the front real quick? I just want to pray real quickly. This was yesterday. I was just sitting on the couch. Ava's watching one of her little cartoons. And I I just kind of write down any word knowledge I get. And um, the Lord just said there were people coming that were like, I need to come as a faith step because of a sick child, a situation that's going on. I'll come and pray for you guys next, okay? Sorry. Her too? Her too? 
Let me just pray, Father, I, I just break the lies of the enemy. I'm not praying some long-winded thing. The blood of the Lamb speaks a better word, a better report, a better report than what the doctors say. And I felt tonight we just need to decree the blood report. The blood of heaven report over what the enemy has been trying to curse. So Father, I just speak the blood. The blood. The blood speaks tonight of this mighty daughter in the name of Jesus. I break the lies of the enemy and even the reports of the doctors who mean well, but they don't know what you say and they don't know what the blood says. So Father, we ask tonight, restore, heal, set free in Jesus' mighty name. Now let the blood do the work. Is it for someone here back home that you came on behalf of them tonight? South Dakota, wow. North Carolina, okay. Teddy is a a boy, a baby, okay. He drowned. Are they trying to bring him back to life? Is that the situation? Jesus. Your blood speaks a better word, God. Your blood speaks a better word, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. Teddy, awake in Jesus' mighty name. Awake in Jesus' mighty name. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. God, do it in the name of Jesus. Teddy, your days are not done. Your days are not done. We just declare the blood speaks a better word. Can you guys just quickly intercede with me for a moment? Teddy, wake up. Wake up, Teddy, in Jesus' mighty name. Wake up. You know what Jesus raised Lazarus? John 1, John 11. He says, Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to wake him up. He's not dead. He's asleep. Wake up in the name of Jesus. Wake up now in the name of Jesus. The blood speaks a better word, a better report, has something better to say. You guys, your grandkids, is there some sickness or what's going on? Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's just to freak you out, put fear in you guys, but we curse it tonight because the blood speaks a better word than this stuff. You know, sometimes the enemy, phantom symptoms, things happen. Reports come out of nowhere when in the moment you're getting mobilized. I feel like there's a mobilization anointing even on your life. And you know, you've got, you. I just speak to that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The prophetic call on her life, sorry. The prophetic call upon her life now in the name of Jesus, trying to distract her, trying to distract her from what God has called her to do and her family. I just decree over her family right now. I decree over her family right now in the name of Jesus. Get ready, she's gonna go down again. I break every single, every single assignment that's come against this woman's family now in Jesus' mighty name because of the calling upon her life. Father, we pray your protection over them. We curse this demonic report over her kids, over her grandkids, over her family in the name of Jesus. It shall not prosper. The blood speaks a better word in Jesus' mighty name. You know, sometimes you just got to get feisty with the promises of God. And you know what? It's hard when you've seen the promises come and go and nothing shifted, but we need to get back that roar again that we go, no, 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 no. Like Christy, she was like backing off and just kind of, okay, you take the mic. No, 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 no. You need to step back into that place again. I've had to do that. I hate confrontation. I hate it. But when I get in that spiritual space, now I love it. I'm just like, come on, let's go. Let's, I'm, I'm done with my kids getting robbed. I need, I got one more thing to say to you. What's her name? Esme. Es- Esme. Esme. I got one more thing to say to you. You know how you deal with this right now? You worship and you fight and you roar and you prophesy, girl. Okay. You're like, God, that, that's all I've got. That's all I've been doing. You keep doing that. Now to come, 
That is how you fight this. I break the cage that the enemy has put you in. I break the cage the enemy has put you in for a very, very long time. I'm not sure why I keep hearing 27 years, but I feel like there's been this period of time where it's felt like I've not even known what freedom looks like. I pray right now that spirit of torment, it's actually even more than that. It's almost like the enemy's literally put you in a cage. Every person you've come into contact with, relationships, all have just, the enemies used them to put you in a cage. I break that now in the name of Jesus. I break that assignment off you now in the name of Jesus. I call you out of bondage now in the name of Jesus. And I just decree of you a fresh laughter to come out of your spirit again, says the Lord. A fresh laughter, life to flow out of you again, says the Lord in the name of Jesus. I know I keep seeing honey over you. And I, I always see honey when it's like the Lord, like, you know, honey when it seeps in a, Bread, or is that my mind? The only one who drenches my bread with honey. I grew up on with bees. You see it slowly sinking in on the bread. I see the honey. It's like the balm of Gilead just seeping into your mind. I break the cage. Your that your mind has been in. You're no longer bound. And I feel like even right now, the Lord is severing ties to people, severing ties to people. I'm not even sure who they are, but you, they're coming right now into your mind. They've had it over you, even though you're not even in contact with them. I break it now in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every single familiar spirit that's hanging around to bother you. They can no longer keep visiting you in your home. They can no longer keep shifting your home into chaos. And that's what I see. I see your home. I see what goes on there. Freedom now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I think I have one more thing that we're gonna we're gonna move into some fun stuff. I'd be surprised if you're still here. You're like, who's this crazy in your run? But <laughs> if you made it this far and you just wanna come up the front and you've never given your life to Jesus and you're just like, Nate, come on down. I'd love to just lead you. I was doing this broadcast back in the early days. No, nope, that's all good. I was doing this broadcast back in the early days. Remember when Periscope was around? We we're in this burnt out season of church and Christy just got on over depression. She went through a year of warring and waging depression and God set her free and she came out the other side like a weapon for God. And I was all burnt out because I've been walking with her, but I was burnt out because of the church season. And she's like, you're miserable. You're walking around the house so miserable. You've got to do something. I'm like, I don't know what to do. You're used to doing everything in a church and now I don't know what to do. So I started just doing these videos on Periscope and prophesying over people. I was ironing my pants for work, you know. And I just do it out of obedience. I hated, I just, I didn't like the sound of my voice. I didn't like, I was sharing my testimony this one day. And these trolls came on. And back in that app, you couldn't really block people. And these guys were coming on and they were trolling me and saying all this stuff. And I just got tired of, you know, starting a new broadcast. I just let them go. 
and they're ruining the, the comments section, whatever. And I was sharing this testimony. And maybe about 30 minutes later, I had this feeling, one of those guys is still on here, still listening. One of them. I said, hey man, he was an Indian guy. You're still on here listening, aren't you? And he said, comment came up. That's me, I've been listening. I'm sorry. I said, hey, it's all good. He goes, I'm sorry about that. We're just being silly. And I said, so it's all good. And I said, but can I tell you something? He said, what? I said, you grew up Hindu, but your parents don't know this. You've been experimenting with every religion out there. And while I was speaking, you tried astral travel into my home and you got blocked. Is that correct? He flipped out. How do you know this? And I said, I'll tell you something. You can search every religion you want and you'll never find the love of a father. He gave his life to Jesus right there on the spot. I say that to say this. If you came here tonight and maybe you're not a Christian and you're from the region and maybe you're, you come on here to just spy on the night or just check in and you know, it doesn't mean you're against me, but you, you know, maybe you're a Wiccan or a witch or something from the region. I wanna give you the opportunity to come down and meet Jesus. I felt you were here. I don't know if you're here still. I hope God still spoke to you and encountered you, but we love you. Jesus loves you. And this blood is the real deal, okay? You can do whatever incantation spells you want. We're here to declare tonight, the Colorado Springs is the place of the birthing of the communion revival. And you're gonna come to Jesus. If you're watching here tonight from Colorado Springs, you need Jesus. You're a Wiccan or a witch, we don't hate you. But we're here to say, get ready for what God's doing. It's time to come and experience the love of a father. So I wanna end tonight with some fun. You know, we, we said that this needs to go home with you and we're serious. My goodness, I can't have meetings every single night with Ava running around like that. It's impossible. I'd, I'd probably have a nervous breakdown and need some deliverance myself in two days. This is, this is all of us, guys. This is about all of us. You know, when you sit around Lou and Therese, Cheryl here. Yeah, hey, by the way, Colorado Springs has an incredible praying community. And I feel like the Lord, the Lord said, this, I told Lou this. I need, to, I need to make people aware. The enemy killed the prayer movement that's, that was here. I didn't know anything about it, but I said to Lou, Colorado Springs had a prayer movement that died. So it became a place of coming and sending. But the Lord says that Colorado Springs was coming into a season of the staying and abiding. I believe a prayer movement is coming here to Colorado Springs. I believe that the ark has moved. What does that mean? <laughs> I believe that God chooses certain places around the world that He just puts a grace on to release people. I truly believe Colorado Springs is gonna be one of those places. And maybe it's gonna be where you're from as well, but you won't know until you begin. You won't know until you start. I was nervous to do tonight because I don't know what God's gonna do. I, I, you know, this is all just on Him, but I know something, you're not leaving here empty handed. If you guys have ever heard of a fire tunnel, I think that's the, I'm not doing it for the sake of a fire tunnel, but I think that's the most conducive way tonight for me and Lou to lay hands on every single person in this place. Is that okay? <laughs> Romans 1.11, I long to see you so that I may impart you spiritual gift to make you strong. There's something about the laying on of hands that releases the grace. And I, I'm a believer in that. I love online, I love getting to see people get touched, but I'm telling you something, the most lasting impact I've seen is where you lay hands on somebody and they get shot out like a cannon into their region. How we're gonna do this, I need some volunteers for this, is we're probably gonna come around this way. Lou and I and a few people, we've got a few people here, Crystal Lee as well, we're going to lay hands 
on you as you come through. We're not gonna be prophesying you, it's just a quick come through and we're laying hands on you. We're gonna need some catches around over here because some people do fall out naturally when you pray over them. So maybe Charles and where's those big massive guys that were here before helping me? Stephen, come on brother. Love you, man. This guy, hey, what's your name by the way? Zephyr. Zephyr, can you help me for a moment? Because some people might fall over and yeah. you look like you're built for this. Okay. So we got, <laughs> he's caught a few people in his time. Hey, true story. I'll, Oh, two split. This lady over here, I feel sorry for her because she went down sideways a little bit and um, um, hopefully that doesn't happen. I used to be a catcher for Benny Hinn back in the day when I was a... And the first time he got me up, I couldn't handle the glory that was on the stage because it's real. Like you get up and you, your body begins to... Like you can't even barely stand. And you're like, you're useless. Get off. Get off the stage. You know, and... Uh, <laughs> And so it took me a few nights to kind of handle it. Me and a guy called Andrew Tom, uh, um, Anthony Thompson were there and we're just crying in the glory. And then by about third night in, we could handle it. We could catch people, but we were useless. Anyway, if that happens to you guys tonight, let me know. I'll, I'll, re- I'll replace you. Um, and, uh, <laughs> all right, so guys, if you, if you don't want this, don't need to come up. But if you want us to lay hands on you before you leave tonight, I don't want you guys going home. Without what the, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to give you guys, it doesn't come from us. So what we're going to do is if we can form a line from the back over here, Lou and I are going to stand here. We need to probably move this table out of the way, guys. We're going to move it just to the back as much as we can. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty heavy, so maybe just move it there. That's awesome. I think that's great. Come on, bro. Yeah, okay. thank you, bro. Yeah, you're built for this too. Come on. Okay. So just hang around wherever me and Lou are because there just could be, okay? And I've got Sophie with me as well. And you guys all around. Okay, all we're doing, guys, is simply laying hands on you and just praying, God, bless them, release them, send them with this revelation of the blood. And Lord, just the anointing to go and release this where they are. My Aussie brother, good to see you. (laughs) I want you to believe wherever, wherever we've gone, we've prayed for dreams. And I felt there was going to be an impartation of grace to dream dreams. You know, I've shared the story. A woman came to me once and she said, I've never had a dream and I've never spoken in tongues. So I said, oh, Lord, pray. We're going to pray. God, give her a dream and have her speak in tongues. Come back next week. She came back next week. I said, did you have a dream this week? Yeah, she said, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was speaking in tongues. She was baptized in the Holy Spirit. People have told us that where we go, there is a grace release. I want you to lift your hands right now. And I want you to say, God, I desire. I desire to hear your voice in the night. Lord, let there be a release of dreams and visions. Pour out your spirit and that spirit of prophecy begin to explode in their lives, in their families. As we lay hands upon you, I want you to activate faith. Go home at night and say, God, give me a dream tonight. You just keep praying and praying and God will begin to unroll your scroll with divine revelation. So let's expect tonight. Yeah, come on. All right. Father, in the name
seated 